Welcome to Wedding Waffle, a very chatty podcast with three industry professionals covering all things wedding, including your dilemmas, shocking stats, and just general wedding chit chat. Get cozy and join us as we discuss anything and everything to do with weddings. Absolutely nothing is off limits. Brought to you by Bouquet Bells, together with Flowers at the Dutch Barn and the Red Rose Cake Company. Hello and welcome back to Wedding Waffles. So today we're doing something a little bit different. I have ditched Caroline and Julie <laughs> and replaced them with Sarah and Jay. So Sarah is my sister and Jay is, is her now husband and they got married three years ago in 2018 and they're going to share their wedding story with us. So the highs, the lows, what they regretted, what they found most difficult, what they enjoyed the most, what they found was most successful and beneficial for their day, what worked. Um, so there's loads to get through. There's so much to talk about your yeah. wedding. So mm -hmm. we'll just jump straight into it because I think this is gonna be quite a lengthy one. So um, first of all, tell us about the engagement. So how did it happen? And Jay, did you pick the ring? Well, to start <laughs> off with, yeah, I did, I did pick the ring. Yeah. And to be honest with you, we had a good idea of the what you wanted as a ring anyway. Well, you always described it to me. I had no choice. Yeah. <laughs> you always told me what you imagined me to have, I think, and I was yeah. always quite happy. I mean, I agreed with what you said. Yeah, so um, we had a, a sapphire with a diamond each side. Yeah, and it's a very nice ring. I sort yeah. of decided that the, the time was right when I was coming, traveling from uh, back from Singapore where I'd been working for three weeks mm -hmm. and um, yeah, decided to go into town and actually it was the first shop, uh, Walton's in Chester. <laughs> and I literally be... saw it and it was like a new from there. You it did. was that was that was the ring. Yeah. So went in there, bought it. Uh huh. And it was a winner because then I could go for a beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Job done. Yeah, yeah. it was easy. In out. <laughs> and then the engagement, obviously I know because I was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But tell us a bit about the engagement night. So yeah, I mean there's so many different ways you can go about it um but i was sort of i wanted to be do it in a setting where you were surrounded by family um so everyone could enjoy the experience with us mm. so we decided to do it on new year's eve well i decided well, you and my dad I, decided yeah, to do yeah. it then because you didn't you weren't really sure when to do it i think you'd got the ring and you hadn't really planned what no. to do next <laughs> no. And but, I think it was my dad that had suggested the New Year's Eve party that we were was, having at Mum's. It was. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, on the night, um, I was absolutely bricking it. <laughs> and then, uh, and the most annoying part was trying to actually get you to come outside so he I could actually saying, ask you. Uh, it was like 10 to 12, so it was nearly midnight. Yeah. And he kept asking me, you were asking people where I was and trying to get me to go outside. And oh. I was like, why, why is he getting me to go outside? I don't know what he's trying to do. Why didn't he come in here? And everyone was just like, Sarah, I think you should go outside. I was like, God damn it, Sarah, get your way ass outside, girl. <laughs> I've got a ring to give you. Yeah. I feel like everyone knew then or like what was about to happen. I think people had an inkling, but we were so young as well. I was only 21. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, yeah, eventually you managed to drag me outside and then you just did it on mum and dad's patio. In the yeah. garden, before the just yeah, yeah. And it was just the two of us. So that was our nice private moment, I suppose. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't in front of everyone. Yeah, for everyone what? else was in the lounge. Yeah, um, and so it's quite nice. We had that private moment, and then I kind of remember <laughs> walking up to the lounge door, and everyone yeah. had gone silent. And I opened the door and just walked in, and just like held up my hand with yeah. the ring on it, and yeah, it was. It but was you were nice so moment. tempted to say, "I said no." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to see their reaction. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, with the engagement, I'll tell you what, the, the most, the scariest part was actually asking your dad. Yeah. It's like, it was like being, going to your head tutor's office, like your head Aww. teacher's office, and you go like, <laughs> sat there like, um, uh, uh, Richard. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like Oliver Twist, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can imagine it being really scary, but I guess like, could you imagine like not have asked him like it's, oh no it's like it's just I it's couldn't a, have done it otherwise that was a huge you know, thing for me as well I wanted yeah. even though I didn't know you were doing it obviously but 
And yeah. I'd always wanted you to do it. I think it's yeah. respectful, isn't it? Yeah, it's a nice quite traditional. Yeah, but I tell you what, as well, funny story about once I got the ring. So we got the ring, mm. and I had it for ages in my drawer. And um, my auntie Louise, bless her soul, like <laughs> she was sat in the, the lounge at my mum's house, and said, "I don't know what you were doing." I just had my twenty-first birthday. Oh, was it? Yeah. And she asked to see the ring that, that you just got oh, me. Yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. god! And he had proposed at this point, and your mum had got me a ring for my twenty-first birthday. Yeah. So I kind of said, "Oh, do you mean the ring that Lisa got me for my birthday?" I didn't really. I mean, it, like looking back now, it's so obvious. Yes. It was so. But I think because we were so young, as I said, I just turned twenty-one. I wasn't expecting to get engaged anytime soon. Yeah. So I just kind of didn't think much of it, which was really lucky because yeah, she was talking about my engagement ring. Oh my gosh! Like, oh, let's see. Let's, you know, it was like you know, halfway through drinking a cup of tea, and she's like, "Oh, let's see that engagement ring." I was like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> what? What engagement ring?" Oh my God. <laughs> Lisa got you. I ring. know. I know. Yeah, which is um, I think yeah. Otherwise, it would have been more obvious. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been, wouldn't it? Yeah. Right. So then diving into the actual mm -hmm. planning your wedding now so tell us when and where did you get married a bit background so we got married it was april 2018 mm. and it was at thornton manor but we got married in a church so we got married in crystleton church first mm. uh, which we managed to get married there because you've got to be in the parish and at the time you did you well, send so my mum's? Yeah, you? so my my mum's house was in in the parish, and it's quite it was quite nice because um, my mum and dad actually got married in that church. Oh yeah, they um, did. So, nice. um, and to be honest with you, it was a it was a lovely church. Anyway. It's a nice village location. Yeah. Isn't it? Do you like having a church ceremony as opposed to getting married at Thornton Manor, which you could have done? Do you think uh, that was the yeah, right? I I'd always Isn't imagined a church. Yeah. I've never really considered anything else. Mm. So for me, a church was just the one that we would go for. Yeah, yeah. I think we want, we've we always wanted to have it traditional because yeah. everyone else in the family has done it traditionally. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you know, it's keeping, keeping to the tradition, really. Yeah. yeah. Plus, I think it's quite nice to have, because one of my favourite parts of the day, we'll probably come to that later, yeah. but um, was driving in the car. And I think if you get married at the venue, you don't get that experience. No, you don't. And we, you, don't. you know, people were looking because you're, like, everyone's looking for the bride. Yeah. and. Uh, waving and like kids were looking and pointing and you'd sort of stop in traffic and people would like say hi to you and yeah it was that was a really yeah, nice, a nice experience, experience and yeah. I think if you don't get married in a church you don't you don't you get don't that, get that. Because you're like contained within one venue, then aren't yeah, you? Yeah, you don't yeah. move around. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, a church was definitely always the way forward. And then yeah, Thornton Manor was the only venue that we looked around. Mm. Yeah. And um, we pretty much just. I think we looked around it first, and then we'd gone a second time. I think we just knew as soon as we, we walked in. You like you get yeah. a feel for like a place. It was as soon as you walked in, it was just like overwhelming. We just knew yeah. that that was a place, and we were just like we're not seeing anywhere else. We know yeah. what we want, how and it, it had everything. How did you find it? it I went on. Was it on Hitched? Oh, was it? <laughs> we were right at the start of the planning. We got engaged, obviously, in that December on New Year's Eve. Yeah. And we booked the venue in March. Mm. So it was like two or three months later. We booked it quite soon. Yeah. And yeah, I think I just sort of searched wedding venues in the local area on Hitched. And that came up. And that came up. Um, and that was, we booked a viewing for it. And that was the only one we booked to view. Yeah. thinking well, we'll book more if we don't like it yeah. but we never even got further than that <laughs> so we just booked well, it didn't easy. we yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Well, it's really, like the yeah. Right, like the ring yeah first, oh, yeah. first place oh, yeah. started off so well didn't it, it was yeah. like going smoothly <laughs> um, so what parts of the planning would you say you enjoyed the most if any <laughs> Let's, letting Sarah do it all. Yes. <laughs> that was the best bit about the wedding planet. Here you are, you take control. See, it's, it's, it's a de definitely a male thing where, you know, Sarah would come, oh, I don't know which, uh, I don't know which bridesmaid's dress colour we should go for, what style, and you go, oh, let's have a look, and she'd show me, and then yeah. I'd go, well, what style do you like? And she'd go, oh, I like this one because of this. And I was, oh, do you know what? I was going to say exactly the same thing. <laughs> How did you know? Uh, <laughs> that's your input. Yeah, yeah that's that was my input. input. I think the bits that I enjoyed 
we liked the food tasting. We went to go and taste our menu. Yeah. And we did the cake tasting. We got the samples for those in the post, didn't we? So we had that mums, didn't we? Yeah, we all did it all together. Yeah. Um, so that was nice. And I probably quite enjoyed making the invitations because I had them printed. Yeah. And then I added bits to them myself. So I'd kind of just... I know that's not really to do with planning. It's more the doing, but... No, it's all part I, of it, yeah, though, isn't it? I quite enjoyed doing that. It was nice. I think when you're doing, like... Um, for me personally, having like doing something um, that you were able to control and do yourself, because mm. a lot of your wedding planning is leaving it to other people. It yeah. is just hiring yeah. people yeah. and leaving them to it, really. Yeah. So being able to do something physical and like yeah. feel like you're getting something done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. It's quite a nice thing, isn't it? Because the other thing I also really liked was as part of the planning was going to the wedding first. I was going to say I actually say really that. enjoyed the wedding. You first. didn't, because I kind of felt like oh, I'm going to be dragging him round, and he's not really. <laughs> Gonna be I remember enjoying Jay it. Absolutely loving. loved it. You were talking <laughs> yeah. to everyone. You get your food from like the pizza van or whatever's oh, there. Free and food. You get a prosecco. <laughs> you get your cake samples. But to be fair, you've got to be careful to anyone out there. Be careful because it's not all free. I, <laughs> this this woman honestly, genuinely gave me a huge like platter of Indian food. Like yeah, that's uh, nineteen quid. It's like. I haven't got my wallet on <laughs> So I had to borrow 20 quid off you, Dad. <laughs> yeah, Scoffing my face. Oh, oh, brilliant. I don't even have to eat tonight. <laughs> I've had all this free food. Yeah, I think you could expect, like, a cake taster or maybe yeah. a yeah. pizza or something. <laughs> that yeah. meal for four people. A little banquet. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> so I know that... Um, obviously because I know you <laughs> you experienced some stress during planning of your day so what do you think caused this and how did it kind of affect you and the planning I think it was I'm a bit of a perfectionist and so I think it was caused I was thinking about what we wanted but I think I was predominantly worried about pleasing other people mm. and making sure you know, sometimes just making decisions, but then in my mind thinking, oh, well, what will they expect or what will they want rather than what do I want? Yeah. And I think it was that worry about trying to make the day perfect for everybody else except for me. Yeah. That was probably one of the biggest things. But I think also with you, it's a, a control thing. If you haven't got oh, control yeah. over certain factors, that makes you stressed because you don't know where they're at, mm -hmm. whether it's progressing, because, you know, in any industry, there is going to be pitfalls, you know, you get people who lag behind or whatnot, anywhere, yeah. and making sure you're on top of that, especially when some you're, you're trying to phone people and you're mm -hmm. not getting answers or they're not answering or they're not getting back to you, that stresses you out mm -hmm. because you're, I think you're left in... the control, actually, that is a big part. Yeah, but there's an awful lot of elements to planning and a lot of different people a lot of chasing and a lot of things going on all mm -hmm. at once and yeah. it's hard to keep track and luckily yeah. I mentioned this in the podcast before we had out well our mum was amazing at she was the most organised woman the most in fact I got her a best wedding planner oh yeah you did medal because <laughs> she bloody deserved yeah, it yeah, yeah she, she was just she kept us on track mm -hmm. yeah. and you, I mean you're like you said a perfectionist as well so you I have my managed. folder my organisation yeah. stuff but then yeah as you just said I think you don't do a lot of it yourself you're mm. you'll book someone then you rely on them yeah and I think I get really worried about the small details which is ridiculous um but it all it all seems to matter though somehow doesn't it it's like it if, if the small details doesn't go to plan it could almost have like a domino effect yeah. and cause other things to be off plan and yeah I think you could stress forever about the what ifs as well very true yeah and then to be honest when it comes to the day you don't care <laughs> You yeah. really See, don't. that's good advice. So yeah, it is. You're stressing throughout the whole planning process, actually come the day, you probably don't yeah. even know it's anything. No, no. If, if no. anything does go Or you don't really, you know, you're not going to be saying, oh, well, the cake's not quite the right colour I asked for, because... <laughs> Who it cares? Doesn't matter. You just <laughs> yeah. got married. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's... it. Yeah, yeah. it's irrelevant. Yeah. yeah. So I think and everyone's going to have a great time anyway, so... Yeah, exactly. and no one's going to know, oh, well, the cake's not quite the colour she ordered. <laughs> yeah. Who's going to know that? So yeah. yeah, yeah. Were you stressed at all, Jay? Were you all right? <laughs> I was all right, to be fair. Yeah. I was more 
stressed for Sarah because I'd, she was getting herself all worked up mm-hmm. and I didn't, you know, want you getting so wound up that yeah. you'd end up not... Um, I cried in the middle of Staples when I was trying to get my menus printed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was little so it's things keeping like you, that. keeping you calm. <laughs> I had to, I couldn't, co- I was like, too many things. Yeah. And I think it had got to a point where they'd all added up. Yeah. And it was the final straw because they'd asked me something. They'd asked me to make a decision there and then in the shop when I was getting them printed. Right. I can't remember what it was to do with, maybe it was the type of card it was being printed on or something stupid like that. Yeah. And I, I, so I literally burst into tears <laughs> and mum had to make the decision for me. Mum oh. had to be like, right, no, this is what you're doing. Oh, oh. So there were times but when it all, got on top of me yeah. a little bit, but I think that's very normal. It's you know but you've never organised an event like that in your life. Some no. people have never even organised like a birthday party or something. Yeah. You know we've never organised anything yeah. that big, and suddenly you've got a wedding with 120 people or whatever. Yeah, and you've got to make it. Well, you feel like you have to make it a, a nice day, and there's yeah. so much to think about. I think yeah, that's. Quite very easily mm. snowballs. But on the flip side, you were like you're saying you were very lucky to have your mum because mm-hmm. she not only was she so good with the planning, but she, like you say, knows you both so well, and she knows how you can get. So she she knows yeah. how to help calm you down and knows if a decision needs making, she'll just make it. Yeah, which is exactly like what said, she did or, at Staples. Or whether you need wine or not. Yeah, that's yeah. always Or an good. afternoon tea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, what would you say were the things that you felt were worth splashing the cash on? So, on the wedding day itself, or, I guess, anything in advance of the wedding day, what did you feel like really worked and was worth it? Cars. <laughs> cars because yeah. petrol had cars <laughs> but we didn't have like we didn't have no, sporty cars we no. went for classic didn't we but mm. that was well, a nice out of like the Lambo I know what I have. <laughs> you should have got involved with the planning then shouldn't you yeah you could have okay. organised your own domestic on a podcast <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> no I think uh, we were talking about this in the car on the way here mm. and we both said like videographer and photographer yeah there we are yeah i mean rachel she she was our photographer wasn't yeah she? i mean for someone at the time who was quite new to the industry wasn't she I yeah mean, she'd done it a couple of years I she, think. she just her talent was just amazing is she just because some you see a, like a lot of photographers like when we were walking around fairs and some of them and no offense but mm. The photos looked too staged. There was no. It wasn't. It depends on your it was, style. It was some forced. people might really like that. Yeah. But for us, we were all very about natural. Mm. We didn't have very many formal shots. Um, we wanted a few of main family and bridesmaids and the groom's party, but yeah. we didn't. We didn't have an entire wedding no. photo. You know, with every guest in because yeah. I just think the organisation's too much. And I know I've yeah. been at weddings when they're trying to organise it. And you're like. <laughs> Standing there for like 20 yeah. minutes thinking, hurry up. Yeah. And we just, we weren't, we wanted natural and informal. I was like Gingerbread Productions. They. Oh yeah, Craig uh, was Craig was amazing, yeah. Like, mm. I honestly wouldn't ever have used like anyone else other than yeah. them too. Because yeah. they, like, the photos were perfect. Like, exactly how we wanted them. Mm-hmm. The video was amazing. Um mm. It was, you know, you and could watch it over and over forever. again. Yeah, you've um, got those forever. And yeah. the best part about it was he caught elements of the day that we hadn't even seen. Yeah. So it yeah. was he, it was it was nice when you're watching it to see, you yeah. know, people's reactions to certain things happening throughout the day that we might have been off having photos taken or mm-hmm. doing whatever. You can't so, be everywhere at the same yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Which is a shame because you do miss things, but then yeah, they capture things. But then that's why it's good to have a video and a good photographer because mm-hmm. you can yeah. see those moments yeah. Yeah, yeah and you you know they're the one of the only parts of your day that you keep forever and you want them mm. to be good and you want yeah. to like them yeah um so yeah we definitely said videographer and photographer we also said venue and caterer okay yeah um i think it's like like to put the portion of your budget towards making sure that it's like 
bang on basically yeah, yeah I mean yeah. I know not everyone wants a super expensive venue so you don't have to splash the cash on something like that but I think we said that everyone kind of remembers the food. It's like when you go on holiday and you had a really great dessert, you always remember it. Yeah. And I think people remember the food at weddings. Mm. But then again, you don't. I suppose you don't have to spend a fortune because people can have pizza vans and yeah. burger yeah. vans and hog roasts and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, all sorts. Kind yeah. Of thing. But yeah, people always remember the venue, the food, the entertainment, what they serve yeah. in that sort of order. So. Yeah. And yeah. to be fair as well, the other thing, can't forget, mm. Matt Tolly, shout out. <laughs> absolute banging dj yeah like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because we were I was, who were we dis- I was discussing this with someone the other night mm. you know you need a dj who can actually read the crowd yeah. that they're you know catering to yeah not someone because you know you've got sort of your elder generation your mm. middle age and your, your young generation and if the dance floor's flat and you, you know you get some people that just can't continually play Motown or whatever, yeah. and you need to read your crowd and like Matt was just amazing. Like mm. the, I feel like there was just always people on the dance floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But there was it was all the everyone really yeah, you know everyone. catered to everyone. Yeah, that's right. It's all ages. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and um, yeah. You know, that was yeah definitely a um, something to invest in. It's yeah, a good it's DJ. good entertainment or DJ. Yeah. yeah. Very good point. Um, so what wouldn't you necessarily bother with again? Fire pits that we never used because it was raining. <laughs> it rained. <laughs> that was the one thing that I actually wanted throughout the whole oh, wedding was the fire pits yeah. outside. Oh. Because, you know, men fire. Yeah. You know. Sitting with your whiskey yeah, well, and your cigar. The, yeah, and... I was going to sit outside with my whiskey and cigar with a fire pit. Yeah. And it never happened. Didn't but happen. then, your venue was so big anyway, there was just like rooms everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Everyone was just everywhere and inside there were so many different parts to it that yeah. it just... You didn't need to go outside. No, no. Like, I don't really think anyone really thought, oh, I'm gonna, I wish I could go outside, I wish it wasn't raining. They probably yeah. didn't even yeah. know they were there. <laughs> that was an issue we'd spoken about with Thornton Manor. They yeah. said they would have to try and do something, you know, if they lit the fire pits to tell people, or you oh, can go and sit outside, because people, you wouldn't know, as you no. said, you'd stay inside. You wouldn't think there was anything going on outside, no, probably. Would you? So, yeah, you, it was your fire pits for you. Your fire, what about you? Um, for like our evening buffet, oh. I mean the caterer specified that you have to feed up to a certain number of guests, yeah. but I feel like we went for, we always knew we wanted an afternoon tea, which I know is a bit strange for an evening buffet, but we had um, sandwiches and all the salady bits and I think we had mini quiches and stuff like that as well, so yeah. we always wanted that and then we decided to go for a cheese board as well because we love cheese. Mm. And I think we just had too much cheese. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And it was just too much. Yeah. Um, what, too I, much food? Or too much food. Yeah. I think the cheese board barely got touched. Yeah. Because um, it was away from the afternoon. So there was the main afternoon tea and then the cheese board was in a different room. Uh. And I'm not sure if people even knew it was there. I didn't eat any of our evening food because I was no. too full from our main meal. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think yeah that was so one of mine. So they say to try and always cater for less guests than you've actually got for your evening because people are still full. Yeah, yeah. we catered. Our caterer wouldn't let us do any less than seventy five percent. Oh wow! You so if we had a hundred guests, yeah. you've got to have enough for seventy five of them. You would have thought you'd been okay. You'd think so. So you went for seventy five percent. We went for the minimum wow. that we could do. Wow! And it was still too much food. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I was. I wouldn't have bothered. I think because we wanted everything, we were like, "Oh, this all sounds so nice," you know, with the afternoon tea and the cheese, and they did chutneys and biscuits and yeah. loads, and it just sounded amazing. And then in the end, it was it just probably I don't know who ate it in the end. It was a bit of a grazing oh. table, though, wasn't it? Like you could go to yeah. and from it, which was nice. That you could pick it. It was quite relaxed. Yeah, I it was very relaxed. So if you weren't hungry, you might be hungry in an hour. It'd still be there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and yeah. yeah, people just love picking up food. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's true. You can just go back at midnight and have a snack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, you. This was quite controversial on the on a previous podcast episode. You both 
pre-agreed that you would go to bed separately on your wedding <laughs> night, which was a bit of a bombshell on the podcast. <laughs> that quite surprised me, because I thought that was actually a very sensible idea. <laughs> well, I think this is for you yeah. as individuals, like, that's why it worked. I think so. So, like, what made you decide that? And do you think... I was worried, mm. I suppose, about being the party pooper. Because I, whenever we go out, you always get very hyperactive and you want to stay up late and have a dance. And I always get very tired quite early on. Yeah. And I didn't want us to be saying, right, Jay, like, I don't want to drag him away from our own wedding. Yeah. And say, right, I'm going to bed. Because I went to bed at half 11 in the end. Well, yeah. And it was kind of good anyway. Because I've been up since, like, five. But your dress was killing you as well. That was the thing. My dress was hurting me that much. I couldn't do it anymore. Couldn't carry on. And... You I'll this... talk about that later because that's one of my regrets. Okay. okay. Um, but yeah, my dress was hurting. It was that heavy. It was making my hips, my knees were aching, my back was aching. Yeah. And I was so tired because I've been up since five o'clock because of hair and makeup and getting ready and everything. So I went. I just knew I would want to go to bed, and I knew yeah. that you wouldn't. And I just felt like, even mm. if we'd gone up and I was trying to get to sleep, you'd be all fidgety, and I'd be like, oh, <laughs> right, just go back downstairs. Then. I don't think yeah. Jay ever wanted to leave. No. <laughs> no. To be fair, though, like I, I get hyperactive when I'm drunk, but I talk two Red Bull energy shots as well. Oh God. And I Mark literally went. For it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I literally went till half four in the morning, and I still didn't actually sleep. And that is why we pre-agreed. Because <laughs> if I waited up for him, I still would have been up at four o'clock waiting. Like, come on, let's go. Yeah. So you felt it was the right decision. Oh, yeah, yeah oh, 100%. Yeah. Because the thing is, it, it was like you said, you didn't want to be a party pooper, but I didn't want to be the person I was keeping you up. Mm. Because, you know, and you were uncomfortable. Mm. It's kind of like, it works both ways. Yeah, I think we and, both knew it was just the right thing for us. Yeah. yeah. And it did work really well. Good. Except it was um, it was my bridesmaids who had to help me out of my dress. Because I don't <laughs> know where you were, and it had buttons all down the back. So I had to get them to help me. <laughs> So, were you nervous about the weather? Because you you said already that it did rain on your day. Were you disappointed by that? And were you nervous about it raining initially? I think we were really worried about the weather. And I kept checking the forecast, you know, because you can see it two weeks in advance. That's the worst thing to do in April. Every day, I I know, every day I kept checking. And obviously April showers and all of that. Mm. I think the week before our wedding, it was really hot, but almost too hot. So you can't wait. I wouldn't have wanted it to be that warm. Um, so I was really worried about the weather again, same with the fire pits. Yeah, that was the main concern for me, mm. was just whether I was going to be able to go out for a cigar. But like you say, it kind of, in the end, it it wasn't bad, the weather, because it didn't rain till really later on. It pretty much rained bang on four o'clock as they were trying to gather everyone to go in for our meal. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it was perfect because we had the drink, we had all our photographs outside. Yeah. It was the tail end of the photographs outside yeah, that it yeah. started to. So yeah. it, and, but it, it was fine. Like I always think you'd be so unlucky to have non-stop rain throughout your wedding day. Oh, yeah. It'd be the, it just doesn't really happen. No, no we drove in the rain. So you were quite lucky with that then, that yeah. you you had the breaks in the rain. And on the day when it did start raining, we weren't... Again, you don't care when it's mm. on the day itself. But then we got to go inside and enjoy the venue, so it was yeah. like a catch yeah. twenty two. Yeah. You, you, you enjoyed it either way. Yeah. yeah, I guess if you were having like a marquee or TP wedding or something, then that would be slightly different. Because yeah. If it had a big outdoor focus or you yeah. wanted just ceremony outside and it was raining, you yeah. would be slightly gutted, I think. Yeah. But fab. So, um, do you have any wedding regrets? This could be something that uh, you experienced during the planning process, or something on the day itself that you regretted. Thinking about it afterwards, maybe reflecting, thinking, "I wish we hadn't done that," or nothing at all. Well, so as I was just saying about my dress, I think my biggest regret is not buying a separate evening gown. As well, I loved my dress, you see, and I didn't want to change out of it. But if I'd known how much it was going to hurt and how heavy it was going to be, yeah. I would, I mean, I wouldn't have had to buy anything expensive. I mean, ASOS do gorgeous wedding yeah. dresses and things for 100 or 200 pounds. I could have just bought something a bit lighter, a bit more casual for the evening. I literally remember you walking in with your dress in its, in its bag, mm. and it was literally the size of a king, of a, of a bed king size duvet. Yeah. And it was like the weight yeah. of it as well. Yeah. I remember that. It I was think. so heavy. It was, there were so many layers to it and everything. Mm-hmm. And it, it was strapless, you. wasn't it? That's the problem. <clears throat> so I went for my final fitting mm. and I thought it was tight enough. Yeah. And then the seamstress, I was sort of hitching it up a little tiny bit. 
And that's when she said, you don't want to be hitching your dress up all day, I'll take it in another quarter inch. Oh, God. And so, but because it was strapless and it was so heavy, we needed it to be really tight so it yeah. would literally hold up so it wouldn't fall down. Yeah. Um, so it was so tight, I didn't really eat or drink anything. I was on water the whole day. I had like a few mouthfuls of each course of food, Aww. I think, because my dress was so tight. So that's not fun. No, and then I had the bruises and my one of my hips was bleeding when I took my dress off because that's how tight yeah. and heavy it had been. It had just been on my hips all day. Um, and that's, See, I just, yeah, I, I was almost thinking like, should I just change into my jeans that I've got for breakfast tomorrow morning? That's <laughs> like what I was thinking. Aww. And that's why, I don't know, it's not something I think a lot of people would think no. about. No, uh, no. Because I didn't think about it before well, the day, that the weight would in a fitting, me. you try it on and it's off again, and yeah. then you're never going to experience 10 hours in a dress, yeah. are you? What's and I did the whole, oh, can I sit down in it? Yeah. But you don't but think about standing up all day no. in it. No, um, so I think that would be the main thing for me. Um, yeah. I mean, for me, it was kind of the same thing, but... Yeah. Basically, I exploded my suit trousers. And I'm not I'm not talking like, oh, I tore them slightly. I mean, they <laughs> exploded. Like... <laughs> They were unsavable. Did that happen on dance floor, Jay? It, it happened. <laughs> to be fair, they did last for about four slot drops. So, you know, <laughs> fair play, right fair play. So you well and truly ripped your suit trousers. Yeah, and you were, to, I mean, you were basically walking around in your boxes, weren't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. With, um, <laughs> yeah, with one of our friends trying to. Uh, she found some duct tape. Trying to duct tape, trying to duct tape. <laughs> They were too far gone. It wasn't a small hole. It was. It was down. <laughs> Beyond repair. It was down an entire leg. Yeah. And all up the back. So you were just basically walking but, around in your boxes. But you know what? I thought. You know what? It's my wedding day, and if I want to put my ass on display, <laughs> I'm gonna damn well do it. <laughs> I just remember you. I'll never forget you just walking through the the really posh lounge in Thornton Manor, and everyone was sat down having a glass of fizz or whatever, and you just walked through. <laughs> you were walking away you just see full on box full on leg, <laughs> full on leg as well like it's just legs like I just see everything <laughs> it's like yeah okay Jay's yeah. I can't remember what time that was but I think it was it was late enough was in the late. day yeah. for everyone to find it funny yeah. and not yeah. be like oh my god what's he done to his trousers yeah. but remember what Paul said to you oh yeah so Paul he was the guy who on the day was kind of running our wedding he okay. was um, like he worked at Thornton Manor yeah. so he was like our day coordinator Lovely and our, I just remember I was sitting again in that lounge where Jay walked through and it was before Jay had come in Yeah. and he just I thought something really wrong had happened because he came up to me and he said um, Sarah I just want to talk to you about your husband he's um, <laughs> I, well I think he's split his trousers and he's just um, he's just walking around with with his ripped trousers and I was thinking like <laughs> Okay, so it's a small rip, and then yeah, next thing you walk through and you barely got any trousers left. <laughs> <laughs> I went full Tarzan. Oh, it's the way he was so worried. I think he was so nervous to tell me because I think some brides would probably yeah flip out a bit or I don't know throttle me. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. One more thing we've actually thought about is, you know, a regret is trying to actually cater to everyone. Mm. It's like. It's impossible. In any family, you have family members you're close to and family members you're not so close to, but you'll invite anyway. Um, Because it's nice to see them and catch up. And you hear about it all the time, but you will always get that one person who spits the dummy out the pram. Mm. And it happened to us. Yeah. And do you know what? Looking back now, I just wish I just said, well, stuff you. I don't want you at my wedding. Don't really, you don't know really who I am anyway. So yeah. I'm doing it for your sake, not for my sake. Yeah. Because you know you're not a big part of my life, and that's that's definitely something a point mm. you want to get across is the day is about you, not about your guests. And ninety yeah. percent of a wedding really mm. is your pain to entertain everyone. Mm. And fact of the matter is, it's about 
you too. Mm. Yeah. I think it's hard because people don't want to start family dramas and all of that. So sometimes you invite it's a people fine line. You feel you have to. Yeah. So do you think you should have been a bit more ruthless with the guest list? Maybe like mm. I think friends and stuff. If you've oh. lost touch with them over a little while, then you can kind of justify mm-hmm. not yeah. inviting them. But families, I guess, it's a bit harder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, it was. It wasn't. You know, a massive amount of it's a very. There's only one or two people. Mm. So, you know, we're not talking on a big scale, but, you know, yeah. it's, you just, you've just got to remember that it's, it's your day, mm. not theirs. Mm. So, you know. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Is there anything else anymore? anymore? I know. I think it's <laughs> getting quite a long list of regrets there, but no, I think that's it. I think it's useful though for people listening to hear because it's so interesting because you never really hear it from a couple's point of view after they've yeah. been married. Yeah. yeah. So it's all quite interesting. Isn't yeah. It? Um, do you have any funny stories from the day, obviously, apart from So there was Jay job. splitting his trousers. Yeah. <laughs> we've been through. And going to bed separately. Which going is quite to bed funny separately. Thing. I think the one thing that I came up with, which is only a, sm- a really small thing, but mm-hmm. someone had thought it was a good idea to go to the pub in Crystleton before the wedding. Who was that someone? Was it Jay by yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a bit of Dutch courage I think before the ceremony yeah. oh yeah but then I, well I wasn't that late actually I think I arrived at 5 past 12 so it was only 5 minutes late mm. but he was dying for a wee that entire ceremony and you think oh. you're standing up in a church yeah. and you can't even do like a wee dance or cross your legs because you've just got a standard look normal oh it's a long service and it well. was long we had three hymns and readings and all <laughs> sorts and you were dying for a wee the entire time and I had oh. no idea then you go and sign the register yeah then we were outside. Well, then you've got to get out. And all your guests filter yeah. out, so we were talking to guests for ages. Then mm. we had the confetti shot at the yeah. gate of the church. So all of this, Jay was dying for a wee. And you kept saying, oh, do I have time to go to the pub over the road and go for a wee? And I was like, well, not really, because everyone waved us off in our car, so we were the first ones to leave. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, so you couldn't go until you so got you couldn't to go. the venue. So you, I think you, you happened to mention it, and our, our driver of our car was like oh there's there's a pub just up the road we'll stop in the pub so we pulled into this pub car park and everyone's sort of looking at us oh. jay runs in for a wee yeah and i think everyone's like oh this the pub's a weird place for a reception <laughs> Which is st- we were getting married or like having our reception at the pub yeah. but um yeah that was quite a funny moment because then That's i was thinking so like we're supposed to just get into our venue and stop at the talk. pub for yeah. a week i sat, stood at the arena and so i was like yeah Going to a wedding? Yeah, just got married. Just got married. Nice. Just carry on with your day. Oh, so funny. And then I think the other thing. So, your granddad's very good for his age. He is, yeah. And he was on the dance floor a lot of the night, but he goes to Zumba and his song is Proud Mary. I love Proud Mary. And <laughs> so he'd specifically asked for it to go on the playlist, hadn't he? Yeah. So we'd put it on. Next thing you know, it's like a Zumba class. It's like he's the instructor, yeah. he's on the dance floor. Honestly. And I'm not joking, there's about 20 or 25 people behind him all following him, doing Whoa. the moves. Yeah. Throughout the, I don't know. <laughs> throughout the whole song, it's like a three and a half minute song. And he, yeah. it's like he was, yeah, some kind of Zumba oh, instructor. Brilliant. And we've got, I think we've got that part of that on our video oh, yeah. But yeah yeah that was like oh, that's a really so funny. funny moment just watching i think he was must have been about 82 or 83 then wasn't yeah. he wow watching do, him with do his zumba people. class for everyone <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah to be fair it probably helped with the digestion <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah burn off yeah. all your food yeah burn off all the calories <laughs> yeah. we've got a good music with song people yeah. Yeah. don't care about anything else yeah, yeah. Exactly. give people a bar and a bit of music yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly exactly yeah yeah Oh, to, to be fair, there was one table. Um, <laughs> we've got like, as my friends do, and actually, as men do, they see fire, they want to start playing with it, don't they? Of course they do. So, it's in the, mid- this. Um, in the middle of doing the wedding speeches, <laughs> and the table full of all my best mates, they end up having like a bit of a fiasco. Because one of them managed to set the, um, set the, me- menu, the menu on, on fire. fire. <laughs> so you can hear this fuss on the table. <laughs> I didn't realise at the time what it was. But um, quite honest, I, I was asking him after. He was like, oh, God, yeah, we, we were throwing water across the table and everything. <laughs> trying to put it out. Of course it was the table. I know. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Oh, brilliant. 
Any more funny stories? There's quite a few there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, we've, taken, we've talked about what would your advice to other couples be? Basically, that was any wedding regrets, I guess. And mm. But do you have any, any general advice for couples? I was going to say the one thing I thought of is, like, get a videographer, even if you're a yeah. bit like oh but I don't like myself on camera because in 30 years time you'll look back and think oh my god I look amazing because <laughs> I'm so young yeah, you know I, oh, I just think it's so important to capture mm. even if okay you don't like yourself on it yeah you get all those other moments with all your other guests on there um, but it's just like it's your wedding day isn't yeah, it and you're it's never going to get that replayed again no and, and even like as gorgeous as the photos are they never quite show the atmosphere mm. or yeah. I don't know the video just adds yeah. something and I do hear it a lot people say oh no we're not like we've decided not to have a yeah. geographer and I kind of always think oh please just do it it's <laughs> like it will be the best I mean, money you spend I yeah. think and um, I mean the other thing as well which we touched on before was that you capture elements of the day that you don't see mm. yeah. and look if you can look back and go oh wow that was amazing I mm. didn't see that or I bet when you rewatch it, do you see things again that you missed maybe the first second yeah. time around? Yeah. yeah. Watching it as yeah. well. Yeah. So it's like a never ending story. We've watched that <laughs> quite a few times, I think. Yeah. I guess it's one yeah, of those things you pull out every so often. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. find it and you think, oh, let's just stick that on. Yeah. But we've got we've got a highlights video, but then mm. we've also got a video that's kind of, I suppose it's unedited. It's okay. just, we've got like an hour of the church and it's like you and the best men having a conversation before i've even come in oh and it's like (laughs) you were talking about the roof of the church you were all looking up and going oh yeah it's a really beautiful (laughs) roof isn't it (laughs) and it's just so funny because you if i'd asked you or what were you talking about before i came in you probably wouldn't have known but it was just so funny watching Mm. you sit there and you're all talking about the architecture of the church (laughs) and it's little things like that that it captures as well it's not necessarily we've got the 30 minute video with all the background music and all edited but then we've also got that kind of mm. stuff too so you've got it all you've got yeah. it all yeah yeah so is there anything else you want to add to that oh we've done all the advice no. i think we're done no, yeah we're anything done. else you want to mention at all um yeah if i mean if you after your wedding if you've got like a bit of a a length of time that until your honeymoon Mm. it's definitely worth going for a, like a mini break mm. because you set sort of and it's inevitable you're going to get that sort of anticlimactic feeling mm. the the morning after where every, you know mm. the celebrations have gone the energy's gone and you feel a little bit hungover <laughs> you know it's that go, moment i think when you get back home and you kind of sit down and you're like mm, what do we do yeah. now yeah it's so it's such a big and day and you get yeah. home and it's just like life's kind of returned to normal but we went to berlin didn't we you did mm. i think it was about two days after the wedding we yeah went for five days was that a good decision because you were still it in really little was. wedding bubble yeah you're in your happy yeah. little bubble yeah uh, and our honeymoon wasn't until it was eight months after the wedding so yeah. we wanted to do Berlin um, just as like a little five day yeah. break and actually it's one of the best holidays we've ever been on oh. I think we both quite like a city yeah and um, yeah it was just lovely wasn't it mm. yeah it was really nice mm. but it was we sort of had that sort of two day break between that as you call it the mini moon yeah and the wedding where you sort of you chill out and you sort of come to the realisation of what's happened and you see oh god I've got married <laughs> <laughs> <Not really wife>. <laughs> <that day. laughs> you see your family and yeah. you know, people come round and mm, yeah. you, you sort of go over memories and things that have happened during the yeah. day that was really nice yeah that's always a nice bit actually is hearing what other people have yeah. got to say about your day and see it from their perspective as well and also what I really enjoyed about your wedding was the breakfast the morning after I was going to say yeah. that because it was like it was quite intimate like you only had you your closest friends and family there yeah, yeah. and it was like because on your wedding day you're so busy aren't you rushing trying to catch up with everyone it was mm-hmm. like yeah. oh we we'll talk to you now sort of thing it was yeah yeah, was yeah was breakfast really, was really nice and just chilled i think yeah. as well it's like you haven't got to worry about it now it's all done it's all yeah 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 definitely yeah, yeah. but well that's it then mm-hmm. thank you so much for everyone that's listened and i hope that this is given you um a bit of guidance and um has been useful to you or if you're just you know feeling a bit nosy i hope you've enjoyed it <laughs> yeah, yeah. um thank you so much sarah and jay for being on oh, yeah, thanks no, for having nice us. To be here. you're literally our first ever like guests 
Yeah. <laughs> Which nice. is really it's an honor. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was all your idea with Jay, wasn't it? It was, it was your idea. Yeah, yeah. Idea. I thought it'd so, be good. Thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> all right, and thank you so much to everyone listening, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.